In today's video, I will be going over pros and cons of every single Dendro character in Genshin Impact and I will also be making this video for every character of each element in the upcoming days and you can check out the other two videos that I've already made for Geo and Hydro on my channel so consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the next videos for all the elements in the game. With all that being said, let's get into it. Starting off with Dendro Archon, Nahita. For her pros, she's extremely unique and has powerful elemental skill and she's consistent on field and off field dendro applier. With quick swapping and using her elemental skill on multiple enemies at once, she's very flexible and works great with most teams and the burst cooldown and energy cost is low and manageable, making her really useful in most situations. Her elemental skill has other cool abilities such as reading the minds of people in Sumeru and I know it's not that advanced and the dialogues are repetitive but still pretty fun and unique and you can use her to grab open world materials that are hard to reach either on cliffs, in water or anywhere for that matter and you can just hold her elemental skill and point it towards those materials and boom, she can collect them. As for her cons, her personal damage can be lower than a dendro unit like Al Haytham which he can be a main DPS but she shines as a sub DPS and support in most situations. Her hold elemental skill usage is hard for mobile players which can be a downside for some players and some players can manage to use her just fine and lastly she's vulnerable to taking a lot of damage since her base HP, defense and movement speed is lower than some units so you do have to be careful while using her if you're not running her with healers or shielder units. But overall it's not a big deal and she's one of the best characters to have in your account and she will be a game changer whether you're a new player or an old player when you're facing any type of challenge in a spiral abyss or open world. For our next character we have Tenari. For his pros, he has high damage potential as an off-field DPS character, strong free-to-play option choices like craftable Hamayumi and Stringless, and has DPS capabilities with good range with burst and charge shots, and overall good for Dendro and Electro team comps and enables them to deal more damage through reactions. But for Khan's damage is mostly single target meaning that he isn't that good against a crowd of enemies and not a good AoE damage dealer, lacks any off field presence for your team, doesn't provide any buffs or utility in most teams especially when he's off the field and his energy regeneration is not that reliable to get his burst back and he won't have another banner in the future and standard banner or losing the 50-50 is your best bet on having him but he can be a fun unit to try and build if by any chance you got him whether on a standard banner or losing the 50-50. For our next character, Kali. For her pros, she can be a good off-field dendro applicator, cooldowns of her elemental skill and burst allows her to be used in most team rotations, and she can be really used in burgeon and burning teams as well. And Favonius Warbow is a great weapon for her which is a free to play option and has decent personal damage potential and for her cons, constellation 2, 5 and 6 are needed for her to have a good value for your team. Requires around 200% energy recharge which can be challenging if you're not lucky with the artifact substats and overall a solid unit at what she does and everyone has a copy of her for free making her available to everyone to build and try out. Overall a solid unit of what she does and everyone has a copy of her for free making her available to everyone to build and try out. Next character on the list, Baiju. And for his pros he has powerful healing and decent off-field dendro application and he can buff dendro reactions making him an amazing support. He can also provide some interruption resistance as well and can work well with F2P 3 star weapons like Thrilling Tails which is always nice to have. And for his cons, he needs a lot of energy recharge to be consistent, not enough dendro application to be the only dendro character on your team to rely on reactions, and the resistance that his shield brings is not enough when dealing with multiple hard hitting enemies in cases like Spiral Abyss, but if you need a healer with some team based utility for a dendro based team, he can be really useful overall. Next character, the menace of co-op recently, Kava. And for his pros, He's not affected by rupture damage allowing him to be a great asset for bloom reaction teams and he has the ability to buff bloom reactions which means he is desirable for most dendro based teams and he can also consistently inflict dendro damage during his elemental burst and for his cons 
high energy cost, which requires investment in energy recharge artifacts, and powerful for Bloom teams, but not really that useful and needed in any other team outside of that, and Bloom is mostly triggered by the Hydro unit accompanying him and not Kave himself, meaning you need to invest on elemental mastery of the Hydro unit in the team and not Kave himself. Next up, Yao Yao. For her pros, she can be an off-field dendro healer that can apply decent dendro as well, does not need elemental burst to heal, and healing of her is enough to keep the team alive, so no need for overinvestment. And for her cons, elemental burst needs too much energy for its value, and prioritizes attacking enemies instead of healing off-field characters, and you need constellation 4 to get a good boost for her to be a better dendro character. Overall nice to have her on your account if you don't have healers for your dendro teams, but do I think you're missing out if you don't have her? Not really since she isn't bringing a replaceable value for your account, and many units can fit her role while outperforming her as well. But if you like the character, that's totally respectable. Our next character, Kirara. And for pros, she can shield party members from damage and has good dendro application while on field with her skill and high base damage on her elemental burst and shield can be reinforced if a new one is created and exploration skill can be used to climb the cliffs and anywhere for that matter faster and for her cons dendro application is minimal off field and provides no other buffs unless she's c6 and damaging abilities mainly scale with attack and hp scaling passive does not increase her personal damage that much outside of bloom teams next one on the list the best dps in dendro none other than Al Haytham, and for pros, he is able to provide consistent dendro damage, allowing him to be in various teams, and scales well from elemental mastery, making him simple to build, and works amazing with the 3-star sword Harbinger of Dawn, provided you have a shield character, or maybe even use a weapon like Iron Sting, which is also another free craftable weapon, and can deal strong AoE or single target attacks with chisel mirror effect. For cons, Pretty expensive to build since all the talents needs to be leveled up to the max and pretty high level playstyle and requires management of mirrors and rotation and he's getting used to for consistency and charge attack is needed for normal combo and his animation is pretty long so if not timed well you might end up tanking enemies attacks and has low resistance and its combos are easily disturbed. So overall a perfect unit if you're looking for a main DPS character but if you're looking for a support unit this may not be the best one for you, but overall if Hal Haytham has a rerun, I would highly recommend going for him. And last but not least, this time, the best version of Traveler as of 2023, Dendro Traveler. And for pros, can provide good off-field Dendro application, has additional buffing abilities to further increase your damage, and needs minimal investment to see the true value, so you don't have to go overboard and pretty easy and free play friendly to build and use, so pretty much a solid unit. And for cons, you need to keep the energy recharge in mind when leveling up the artifacts, and the skill and burst doesn't really work with pyro units for version and burning reaction teams, since the burst gets destroyed when you use a pyro unit attack, and that's where Kali is better to fit this role and you also need an electro unit to speed up the burst and replication but if you're trying to find the best version of traveler to focus on and have your artifacts and weapons revolving around that in particular i would say i would highly suggest going for dendro traveler since that's where he shines the most as the time of recording this video in 2023 and yes you wouldn't regret it and with that the list is over and we briefly mentioned the pros and cons of each playable dendro character in Genshin Impact at the time of recording this video and if you enjoyed and interested in this type of video consider liking and subscribing which I highly appreciate every single subscriber and let me know down below what do you guys want to see in the future and until the next video have a good day or night and peace.